Hi, my name is Patrick Fries. I'm a soil health scientist here at Ward Lab. I focus on everything from soil health testing, method development, carbon chemistry. And uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about carbon chemistry. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about this, uh, everyone from homeowners to industry folks, uh, looking at things like uh, different carbon tests, carbon sequestration, uh, the different things we look at to make those calculations and assessments. Uh, carbon's probably one of the most well-known elements, uh, I guess globally, uh, mostly because of recent uh, events in the past few decades, things like uh, carbon uh, sequestration, uh, global warming, climate change, things like that. It all focuses on carbon uh, capture uh, from the atmosphere, CO2 in the atmosphere, which is carbon. Carbon's considered uh, something of the, the currency of modern life uh, because it's used as an energy source for almost every organism. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for carbon and a few other elements. Uh, but carbon's a big one. It's about 20% of our body. Uh, it's about uh, half of uh, the mass of a plant. Uh, so uh, every, every organism's utilizing carbon in different ways, but mostly for energy. One of the other uh, important aspects of carbon is uh, soil, soil carbon, which uh, a lot of people understand, uh, especially with some of these recent movements towards things like no-till and soil health and uh, understanding what all this means. Uh, carbon's a big part of that. Uh, about 58% of organic matters, organic carbon. Uh, and there's different ways to test it because uh, at the end of the day, uh, all carbon isn't created equally. Uh, there's different qualities of carbon, uh, uh, at least that's what we've come to, come to understand today. And those different qualities will relate to things like uh, soil quality, carbon turnover, carbon stability, uh, and ultimately carbon sequestration in the environment uh, on the thousand year scale. So uh, what I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is some of these tests, uh, what they mean and um, I guess uh, things that you could do uh, testing wise, even if you're just a homeowner and you're curious, uh, that you can do uh, with your soil and it will give you some information in terms of how much carbon you're storing in your soil. And you can track those changes with time and it's fairly simple. So uh, some of the broader tests that we do for carbon uh, are things like organic carbon and inorganic carbon for soil organic matter. Uh, and that's everything from carbon derived from uh, living organisms uh, and then also carbon derived from minerals, so carbonates. That's typically one that you look at if you're in a high pH soil, an alkali soil. And uh, those all contribute to what we call soil organic matter. Uh, that's a very broad focus for carbon. It's just kind of like uh, looking at carbon as a whole. You're not really getting any quality data. You're just looking at the total number. From there, we can look at things um, like carbon stability and uh, carbon turnover. Uh, this is what we call active carbon, and it's just, uh, just as it sounds. It's what microbes actually use for energy. So it's very active in the soil. It's very subject to management strategies. Uh, it'll show really mean meaningful differences uh, if you're doing these different strategies, such as tillage versus no-till. Um, so it's a really good marker uh, to, uh, I guess, employ if you are concerned about some of these things, some of your different management approaches. Um, and then we can also look at things like uh, stable carbon. Uh, so stable carbon is what's actually kind of being tucked away in the soil long term, uh, uh, like from, you say, 50 to 1,000 years. Uh, these tests are based on particle size. So what we actually do is we take the soil and we use a very fine mesh sieve. It's almost fine as cloth. And uh, we sieve the soil and everything that falls through is so fine. It's about the silt and clay size. That's what's called stable carbon uh, because it's protected by minerals in the soil. In fact, it's called mineral associated organic matter. Uh, everything above that size, uh, at least for uh, uh, less than two millimeters in the kind of the soil range that we look at, is called particulate organic matter. That's mostly plant sourced and what the microbes actually uh, utilize for food. Uh, in fact, um, roughly about 80% um, of the uh, uh, carbon or organic matter mass is uh, derived from uh, microbes. So you need a really healthy soil to really uh, kind of sock away a lot of this carbon long term and really promote carbon storage. So um, that's some of the ways we test this. It's fairly easy um, and well, we've developed very high throughput ways of doing this. Uh, now other people ask about things like uh, carbon sequestration testing. Uh, everyone from industries to homeowners, it's a really curious thing that people are looking at and they want to know how are people looking at this um, and it's a lot easier than you think. Uh, we normally do uh, bulk density testing in the field, which is you take a core size 
uh, of a known volume and you just pop it in the ground, pull it out, uh, you have the mass of that soil and you divide it by the volume of your core and that's the bulk density of that soil uh, and that's on a, a dry basis. Uh, now how you look at carbon sequestration or carbon storage is you just take up some of that soil and you do total carbon analysis. You can do total carbon or total organic carbon. Uh, and then you uh, multiply the bulk density by the organic carbon percent and then the depth, I believe. And then that will give you your carbon stored uh, per volume. So it's kind of like a, a carbon bulk density. And that relates to carbon storage, uh, carbon credits. It can get much finer than that. Uh, uh, for example, if you want to actually look at some of those stable fractions versus the active fractions, it gives you a better indication of what's actually going on with the carbon in your soil. Uh, the best part of that is if you are a grower and you know what these different fractions mean and how they relate to things like nutrient cycling, carbon storage, uh, soil quality, uh, you can really uh, utilize some of this data to look at your different management strategies and how that will actually change the system for your, uh, for your own benefit to help utilize some of those nutrients, reduce your input cost, uh, and uh, I guess uh, increase your uh, bottom line. So uh, yeah, that's a few of the tests that we do for carbon and some of the background on carbon. Uh, we have other ones outside of that as well. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of carbon tests. So if you have any questions about carbon uh, uh, or other tests that we provide in terms of soil health or general soil testing, you can always call up here and uh, ask for me or one of the other soil scientists or agronomists. And we can uh, go into a lot more detail with you. And we're always happy to.